Today I've got a problem from the Oxford University Mathematics Admissions Test. This comes from 2013 and this is problem 5 which consists of 6 smaller parts. We define the digit sum of a non-negative integer to be the sum of its digits. For example, the digit sum of 123 is 1 plus 2 plus 3 which is 6. So you're just adding up the digits. Part 1. How many positive integers less than 100 have a digit sum equal to 8? Uh, let n be a positive integer with n less than 10. How many positive integers less than 100 have digit sum equal to n? Part 3. How many positive integers less than 1000 have digit sum equal to n? How many positive integers between 500 and 999 have a digit sum equal to 8? How many positive integers less than 1000 have digit sum equal to 8? And one digit at least 5. And finally, part 6. What is the total of the digit sums of the integers from 0 to 999 inclusive? Okay, we're going to start with part one. And you'll notice there what I did when I read the problem is I actually read through each part first. A lot of the time it can be quite tempting when you read part one, it will normally be a bit easier and just answer that straight away because it's easy marks, low hanging fruit. But I would still highly recommend when you open up the MAT paper, ensure you read every single question first. You've got to answer every question, so you may as well read them all first. The reason you want to do this is A, you're going to pick out the questions which work towards your strength. So for example, with me, when I was doing the MAT back in 2017, uh, before I studied maths at Oxford, I realized that I was not that great at geometry. So if I saw a geometry problem, I'd probably leave that till, then, till the end, because if I didn't have any time left, oh well, I probably wouldn't have got as many marks from that problem anyway. Um, so that was my strategy. Um, also, the second reason is, you'll realize this, is your brain works subconsciously without you even realizing. So once you've read these problems, your brain is going to slowly be ticking away at these problems. You won't even realize. So I encourage you to do this um, in your pre preparation for MAT, is read a problem and don't solve it straight away almost forget about it and you'll you'll realize in a week's time or whatever your brain would have probably actually solved the problem maybe even in your sleep anyway that's enough waffling for me let's get stuck into this problem here so part one how many positive integers less than 100 have digit sum equal to eight okay well let's just play about with it what's the smallest number that has a digit sum equal to eight well that's obviously the number eight but i'm going to write that as 08 and you'll see why in a second What's the next number? Well, obviously, no other single digit numbers will work. So we have to go into the 10. So the first digit will be 1, which forces the second digit to be 7. And we can maybe see what, what's going to go on here. We're going to get 26 next, then 35. So we're increasing the tens digit by 1, decreasing the units digit. And we're going to continue this until we get to 80. Obviously, there's not going to be anything beyond that point. OK, well, how many numbers are there here? Well, you could just manually count these and write these all out. But we're going to be smart about this. We're going to look at the first digit. So we're going from 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 8. So there's going to be nine numbers there. So that's our answer to part one. Part two, uh, let n be a positive integer with n less than 10. How many positive integer integers are there less than 100 with digit sum equal to n? OK, so we've just answered the case when n is 8. Uh, and the answer was 9. Let's just try another value of n, just a random value. Let's try n is 3, a smaller value. Well, how many have digit sum equal to 3? Well, it's 0, 3, 12, 21, 30, and that's it. That's all we can kind of do. It's not too difficult to kind of convince yourself that, in fact, the only numbers that will work for n are 0n, 1, like n minus 1. It's a bit of weird notation. Maybe I'll put concatenated. 2n minus 2. And you keep going on until you get to n0, concatenated. And how many numbers are in that list? Well, it's precisely n plus 1, like so. OK, part 3. How many positive integers ha uh, less than 1,000 have digit sum equal to n? So these are, I guess, up to three-digit integers here. OK. How do we tackle this? Well, the idea is if it's a three-digit integer, and we're also going to think of one-digit and two-digit numbers as three-digit numbers. So for example, the nine, number 99, I'm going to write as 099, just for the sake of this. How do we tackle how many have digit sum equal to n? Well, let's look at the first, let's look at 8. So imagine n was 8. I'm just going to give you an example here. So imagine n is 8. Then the first number in our three-digit number could be anything from 0 to 8. Let's just say it's 2. And the idea is if the first digit is 2, how many ways are there to fill those two numbers? Well, those two numbers have to add up to 6. And we've just done part 2. How many uh, two-digit numbers have digit sum equal to 6? Uh, well, it's precisely 6 plus 1, so 7. So there'd be seven ways of kind of filling in those two numbers. And that's provided the first digit is 2. What if instead of the first digit was 1? Well, then these two digits would have to add up to 7, and there's eight ways of doing that. 
And so you realize when n is 8, if you want the total to be 8, um, you kind of need to, to consider all the various starting numbers and then all the various ways of doing the remaining two digits. So let's call the first number h. So the hundreds is h. Then these two numbers have to sum up to n minus h. How many ways are there for a two-digit number to sum to n minus h? Well, it's n minus h plus 1. So for every possible value of h, um, these two digits, the, the n minus h plus 1 ways of filling in the remaining two spaces. Now, what's the, what are the possible values of h? Well, in this case, when n was 8, the first digit can be any number from 0 to 8. Analogously, h can be any number from 0 to n. So we're simply doing the sum from h is 0 to n of n minus h plus 1. Now, you could evaluate this, but I'm just going to notice a nice trick here. n minus h is a nice shift of these terms here. It's almost like we're just doing the sums in the re reverse order. When h is 0, n minus h is n. When n is 1, that's n minus 1, and so on. And you're going to keep going down to n minus n, which is 0. So, in fact, I can replace n minus h here with just h. So the sum from 0 to n of h plus 1, and then this thing here, this is a very famous sum. Uh, this is precisely going to be, well, notice we're starting from 1, essentially. So h plus 1 when h is 0 is 1. When h is 1, uh, this is going to be 2, and so on, all the way up to n plus 1. And so that's simply going to be n plus 1, n plus 2 over 2. This is a sum you need to memorize if you're doing the MAT, that the sum of the positive, in positive integers from 1 to k is k times k plus 1 over 2. Okay, cool. That's part four done. Let's scroll to part five. Uh, how many integers, uh, positive integers less than, a, sorry, part four, sorry. How many positive integers between 500 and 999 have digit sum equal to eight? Um, Okie dokie, cool. Um, so hopefully it's pretty clear that the first digit can only be five, six, seven, or eight. Uh, obviously it can't be nine. Let's say the first digit was five. Well, then these two digits have to add up to three. Again, going back to part two, there's going to be four ways of doing that. If the first digit was six, these two have to add up to two. There's three ways of doing that, and we can kind of see what's going on here. We're going to get four plus three plus two plus one, which is ten. Um, so four ways when the first digit is five, three ways when the first digit is six, two ways when the first digit is seven, and one way when the first digit is eight. So the answer to part four is ten. Okay, dokie, part five. Maybe I'll just uh, move the question over here. So I've got a bit of space. Part five. How many positive integers less than 1,000 have digit sum equal to 8 and one digit at least 5? Well, what we've just done is worked out when the first digit is at least 5. How many numbers are there? So there was 10 there. And so the exact same argument can be replicated when the middle digit is at least 5. And you're going to get 10 numbers there. So when this number is either 5, 6, 7, or 8, you're going to get 5 numbers there. And similarly, when the last digit, sorry, not 5, 10 numbers there. And similarly, when the last digit is 5, 6, 7, or 8, you're going to get a possible 10, uh, 10, 10 different numbers. What we have to be careful of is, are there any overlaps? So are there any repeats? Thankfully not, because if you have a 5 here, none of these digits could be 5 or higher, um, because obviously that would already add up to at least 10 and be more than 8. So therefore, these three tens are distinct numbers. And so the answer here is just 30. Lovely. Last part of this problem. What is the total of the digit sums of the integers from 0 to 999 inclusive? This is a classic problem, one you should be familiar uh, with the solution, or if not, pay attention now. So how do we do this? So um, the idea is to think about these digits in your number. So the first digit can be anything from 0 to 9. Second digit can be anything from zero to nine, and the third digit can be anything from zero to nine. From, and we know that like there's a thousand numbers there from zero to nine hundred ninety-nine, and so one in ten of those numbers, in other words, a hundred numbers, will have a nine here. Um, so in in total there'll be a hundred in the units column there'll be a hundred nines, a hundred eights, a hundred sevens, hundred sixes, and so on, all the way down to a hundred zeros. Similarly for the tens column. There'll be a hundred nines, a hundred ten, a hundred eight, sorry, hundred seven, and so on down to a hundred zeros, and same for the hundreds column. So for the digit eight, for example, we're going to have three on three hundred occurrences of the digit eight. 
So the total is going to be 300 lots of 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way up to 9, which is 45. So 300 times 45. Uh, so 3 times 45 is 135. So this is 13,500 or 13,500. That would be our answer to part 6. A pretty nice problem. This is question five. So question five, I normally descri describe as the wild card question to my students. So it's normally one which is a little bit difficult to prepare for. It's not something that you would see in an able exam. And perhaps the maths is a little bit different to maths you've done before. So a lot of the time with question five, you'll see that they'll start the problem um, kind of defining lots of terms. Obviously, this is from the old format. The new format's a little bit different. But I expect that the longer questions will be slightly more of question five style where it's a little bit more unpredictable. Anyway, if you are looking for preparation for the mat, I have a bunch of videos on my channel, so do check them out if you're new. I've got loads and loads of videos with, you know, going through problems from the MAT, TMUA, STEP, interview problems, all that sort of stuff. So do check that out. Please do like and subscribe as well. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.